Hi, today we are in Palo Alto with Cool Iris and Sujana. Who are you, Sujana? And what do you do? Well, firstly, welcome to you and Anastasia. Really happy to have you here at Cool Iris. Okay. Uh, who am I? It's a, it's a pretty interesting question. I happen to represent a really, really cool team uh, here at Cool Iris. Uh, as you know, five of them are from Germany uh, and then others are from different parts of the world. Cool Iris is something that Austin Shoemaker and I started uh, six years ago with a couple of other co-founders, in mm -hmm. fact, Josh and Mayank. And we started with a very simple thesis that you have so much content on the web, how do you really discover and navigate through it? Mm -hmm. And then it has had a series of evolutions during in the last six, seven years, where we evolved from that to another product called PicLens to then a Cool Iris on, for the desktop. And probably one of the biggest shifts that happened in the landscape and in the ecosystem is where mobile ecosystem with Android and, and iOS started to develop so rapidly. Uh, so we actually had to shift you know, significantly to mobile. Mm -hmm. So the journey of Cool Iris for the last six years has been amazing. Mm -hmm. My original roots come from India. I was born back in Bombay. Mm -hmm. I'm a chemical engineer in my earlier life before I went to University of Chicago for my MBA. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've done a couple of startups to be at Cool Iris. Ah, okay, so you have been doing some entrepreneurial stuff before you started this company. That is correct, yeah. So Cool Iris is now currently my third startup. Uh, it's my first one where I'm the CEO. And it's been exciting, one of the best teams, and it's been an honor for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did your MBA help you to become a successful entrepreneur? It's a good question because, you know, I, I grew up in an entrepreneurial environment. Both my father and mother started a color colorants company in India, mm -hmm. which has now grown to become the largest in Asia. So inherently, I had the, just by, by virtue of being at home, kind of hearing and listening to yeah. challenges and excitement and all that package of entrepreneurship. Uh, but MBA really, really helped me. Again, this was more the Chicago training uh, to... To have the level of sort of framework and confidence to say anything that you're going to be doing, you know, make a worldwide impact mm -hmm. and how do you really scale and how do you think about business model right from beginning rather than saying, oh, I'll worry about it later on. I think that has been the biggest contribution from the business school. Mm -hmm. Are there any specific courses or classes that you can recommend people taking? Yes. So since I have been there, this was now about 15 years ago. Uh, Entrepreneurship was actually one of the curriculums mm -hmm. uh, that started over there. They have a Polsky Center of Entrepreneurship and they had a program called NVC, which was the New Venture Challenge. And we participated in that. And since then, and I've been able to stay in close touch with the school. Mm -hmm. And they've done a really, really fantastic job of creating more of an entrepreneurship training mm -hmm. rather than an entrepreneurship class. Mm -hmm. And I highly, highly recommend that to... You know, whether it be to Chicago or at Stanford here across the street, whatever it is, earlier you start in that training, yeah. I think the better it is. Okay, great. So, Janya, let's talk about the business model of Cool Iris. Currently, you have two products. Can you please describe them shortly and how they interrelate? Correct. So, the, the two particular applications that are on, in the market today, one is called Cool Iris, just like the name of the company. And second one is called Beamit, which is a, a much more recent addition. Mm -hmm. The way we look at this is there's a very interesting phenomenon that is happening out in the market. And that the word photos and the definition of photos and what it really means to you has really changed significantly because everybody now has a the, the, the phone and a camera and all everything that we know. But there are three main trends that are important to notice. One is the quality of the capture that happens is actually increasing significantly. Mm -hmm. The number of devices that you use to capture, whether it's a GoPro, whether it's a camera or mm -hmm. the phone, those are all going up. Mm -hmm. And then on the consumption side, when you're looking at it, even if you look at the recent iPhone 6 and 6 mm -hmm. Plus and all, you have this beautiful, you know, pretty good size screens. Yeah. So when you're looking at this, a media experience is something that the consumer comes to expect and says, I want this to be a great experience. Mm -hmm. We felt that it's actually being underserved in the market. So we have approached it from two sort of lenses, if you will. One lens is the media lens, and that's what Cool Iris does. 
it aggregates for you without copying it, it just mm -hmm. links all your sources so all your photos in one place mm -hmm. becomes a very simple prop, uh, proposition yes. for the consumer the second one is it's under the more of a messaging container because as people are sharing these photos they're all being shared mm -hmm. it's not like oh I now have a messaging app which is separate from my media sharing app mm -hmm. which is today what existed before Beamit came and we said why are the messaging apps so poor in their experience of media and yet you have good media sharing experiences were really poor in communications mm -hmm. why not make it a unified experience for the consumer mm -hmm. so under the media experience we look at it whether you're looking at it from a media side or from a messaging side so messaging meets media or media meets messaging mm -hmm. is our is our thesis and proposition Understood. The business model is an interesting part that you just referred to and the business model comes at it from multiple levels it's a freemium business model it's you know we look at analogs in the market we look at an, a whatsapp we look at an evernote apps that are being very successful at within the app economy they're not games but consumer applications how do you now generate a you know enough of a scale and yet monetize that scale and freemium seems to be the right way of going about it so we have what we in the market today is free mm -hmm. we would perhaps love to demo you Hamon who is my colleague who leads you know, all the BD developments here can demo to you all the premium features that we've thought about mm -hmm. one potential premium feature is actually an offline support mm -hmm. and offline is a great value proposition which is completely non-existent in the market I would say in, in the case of messaging apps where even if you're offline you should be able to use that mm -hmm. it saves a lot of sort of data plan and data usage for the consumer they can make the ROI calculation so potentially this is not finalized yet mm -hmm. but could be hey for 99 cents per year you can now have offline support mm -hmm. and where the consumer says oh I'm gonna save you know, 25 30 dollars I just have to pay a dollar right. well, it's, a, it's a great deal mm -hmm. and we have the other bucket of a set of 10 features 10 premium features which is a collection more like a basket of utility mm -hmm. and various consumers but that would probably be priced at around four dollars per month on a subscription plan mm -hmm. um, I mean cool iris is for the aggregation of photos and um, Beamit is for the sharing of photos currently the both of these applications are separate what is the reason behind that and why sh shouldn't it be totally integrated into one product it's a really good question I think you know if you would have asked this question to me two three years ago I would have said absolutely it should be one product mm -hmm. what we are finding over and over again and this is also you find with other applications is the thing that consumers really accept in the market and adopt is this singular intent which is hey if I'm thinking messaging I want to go to this app if I'm thinking media I want to go to this app so it's really one experience but depending on what you were trying to do so, so we have this concept of T minus three, which is three seconds before you use the app. What were you thinking? Yeah. And that thought process from that point to actually invoking the application yeah. has to be so efficient. You're from Germany, so efficiency, you know what I mean, yeah, right? right? Mm -hmm. It has to be so frictionless that the consumer can get to it fast. Mm -hmm. If you make it into one app, mm -hmm. all of these things, the features and capabilities Sometimes you'll say like, wait a second, what do I do? If you make the consumer think, mm -hmm. you lose the consumer. Right. So idea was to keep it being able to talk to each other very seamlessly. So I can aggregate them in one area. If I want to take that and then use it for my conversations, we haven't yet launched it, but that will come down the road. Mm -hmm. I should be able to do that. But if I just want to use it for my messaging, I just want to send Hamon something or Sebastian or Austin something, mm -hmm. I should be do that, able to do that on the fly. Understood. Let us uh, stick, uh, take a step back and talk a little mm -hmm. bit about mobile marketing. Um, what advice can you give us uh, entrepreneurs or frameworks so they can you know, decide for themselves how to do mobile marketing for their mobile application? It's a super important question. I think the, in the app economy, if you really think about it, I think the I, I do find a lot of startups and you know who, who've done well too. I wouldn't say that not is they say oh let's build the app. building the application is actually the easy part, mm -hmm. right? I mean relatively speaking, mm -hmm. it's marketing the application is where the the challenges lie, 
and there are not that many sort of secret sauces out there there's very clear understanding of who are you building what audience are you trying to build towards is your differentiation unique enough not just is it is unique but is it significantly more unique than a substitute that's out mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. or you have a clear understanding of your substitute how is it that you're going to create a positive network effect mm-hmm. from the application so i'll give you one great example of what we did at bmet most messaging applications require the two parties who are going back and forth to have the application mm-hmm. we took away that constraint we said if i want to communicate with you i should be able to do that and you do not need the application mm-hmm. installed mm-hmm. and that actually creates a very low friction and barrier for me to then message to you if you do join then the network becomes stronger so the positive right. network effect comes mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. so what i'm trying to get to to really tangibly answer your question here is from the consumer's perspective the the application the, the business that is looking at that say is there a positive network effect that's going to happen so the product is going to grow on its own mm-hmm. because anything else that you're going to, that you can do you know if the product is featured or so you have press around the product or there's some temporary marketing that you did at an event or some sponsorship it's going to give you a blip yeah and hopefully it's a new baseline yeah. but the growth comes from the product propagating itself Understood. which comes from the usage of the product mm-hmm. Understood. Let's talk about the corporate strategy of Coolaris. Uh, what is the um, yeah, let's say product strategy that you are going for? Because currently you have this two type of products, and you have the freemium model. And can you uh, elaborate on this kind of matrix and how it will de- uh, evolve over time? The 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 high level strategy for us is to have a, a good, solid, engaged user base. Mm-hmm. Right? People will talk about like what are your active users and all, and we actually look at it. What are your engaged users? Mm-hmm. are they really using the product or not so by having both of these applications today we are ios only mm-hmm. which is a, i mean i'll be first to admit it's actually part of a limitation yeah. because when i'm messaging somebody they better be i don't even know what yeah. my cousins that i'm going to send to yeah. or my colleagues that i'm going to send to whether they are ios or not so we have a, a the upcoming version of web mm-hmm. which is not launched yet but it's in the, it's in the friends and family beta mm-hmm. and and my other colleagues Howard Aaron and all have done a really great job of looking at it from the consumer's perspective so if you don't have the application mm-hmm. you receive an email from the email you click on the link you're on the landing page how to make that onboarding mm-hmm. very very seamless yeah. is where the 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 application serves its value the second big value it serves is you have a lot of your high resolution media whether you're uploading those photos you're trying to download those photos typically happens from the desktop or the laptop on the, from the web so you've solved for that and of course we have the android version which is a significant portion of the market which Austin my co-founder he's leading the initiative on that mm-hmm. so the strategy is to have an ecosystem of android ios and web mm-hmm. build it together drive the synergy increase the scale simultaneously launch the the premium features mm-hmm. and and grow the business okay, and partnerships becomes a very important complement of the organic growth mm-hmm. so this is something that you know uh, that Ramon here who does that you know he travels all around the world china korea we've done amazing partnerships yeah. uh, throughout the world where you work with companies whether they are oem companies or telcos or mobile internet companies and see how they can benefit we can benefit in terms of promoting our application so i, I don't know if that helps explain totally and is and can you a little bit elaborate on this type of partnerships how you approach those companies and what is really the benefit for you and for the counterpart the quality of the app and the service has to be amazing enough for any partner to take you seriously mm-hmm. and i think luckily we've been able to accomplish that the way it typically works is each of the partner depends on which segment they come from oems look at it a little bit differently device companies mm-hmm. carriers look at it a little bit differently and then mobile internet companies so i wouldn't say there is a one magic formula that fits everybody yeah. of course it's also not the case where for every company we have a different deal at a high level i would say we benefit because they will take our application and promote it to their users mm-hmm. they benefit because we will typically add something that makes it really cool and unique for them so maybe mm-hmm. it's a feature year or it's an uh, it's a way to say a couple of these features if you're prepaying for that i'm now going to make it free 
for your user base for x amount of time and or in the, in, in the case of some of the other partners in the case of cool iris for instance mm-hmm. we have we were able to we were the first company by baidu to issue apis to any company around the world mm-hmm. like not just a us or a chinese company or a big or small company mm-hmm. and they did it because we were able to showcase the best experience for the cloud storage mm-hmm. inside our application and so they benefited from that mm-hmm. sometimes these companies will say oh can you promote our service the cloud storage service in markets aside from their core mm-hmm. markets and of course we are willing to do that in exchange for them promoting our app sure. to their user base so it's always a mutually beneficial relationship mm-hmm. uh, i think finding that common ground sometimes takes x amount of time but that's exactly what the team does okay, okay. and and makes it happen From my understanding, Coolaris is somehow in in this photo and sharing market. Can you tell us a little bit more about this market and uh, the trends that are currently happening on, in there? It's it's a good question because I think photos and sharing. You know, uh, there was a period in time. I think luckily it slowed down now. But like every week, there were ten startups in the in the photo sharing or photos. I think it has it has gotten a little bit better because I think mm. people and companies have realized mm. as to. the the newer trends that are coming in here so the idea is photos is not just what we thought of as photos today it's become much more of a of a medium of communication mm. even if you consider something like snapchat it's a, it's a good way to communicate it's ephemeral so of course it goes away mm. because it solves for those particular use cases on the other side other segments so we're talking about market segments right we have designed beamit as a product thinking about families and close friends like it's really been designed ground up for their needs mm-hmm. and that's not what snapchat does snapchat is great for your friend or for the fun stuff the dessert funny faces and all that kind of cool stuff mm-hmm. but when you're looking at trying to preserve that in high resolution you know the babies it's not when your baby's first step it may be just a goofy face that the baby is making in the restaurant but you want to preserve that for the longest time you want to look at it in, in full resolution you want to share it with people that you care about mm-hmm. so photos and sharing have now become almost synonymous yet when you are looking at it that's why we have these two lenses photos is the cool iris lens and sharing is the yeah. uh is the beamit lens it's really under the same phenomena mm-hmm. as far as companies going at it and approaching at it there have been various theses like you can look at it as company says oh i think this is what's ne- needed some companies are saying like oh i don't even think a photo is needed even no keyboard is not needed and i'm just going to say uh, i have another friend actually he has a company uh, they do an app called hearts app mm-hmm. and you press it and then the heart, other person receives a heartbeat okay really cool nothing more it's still under messaging mm-hmm. but there is no there's no keyboard that even comes up yeah. so many many companies are attacking attacking this thing from a different angles you also have the big companies some really really great companies mm-hmm. actually approaching this from a a more different style and angle you have startups so it's a very fun ecosystem is what i would say okay great Uh, Sujanya, uh, you have started several startups can you elaborate a, a little bit on your learnings over the years Yeah, I wouldn't say several startups, but yes, I think you know I've had the pleasure of being in the valley here for some time, and and a couple of startups now. Um, the learnings have been very interesting. I think the back in the day when the uh, I used to see, and and sometimes I even see it today, people talk about the word risk. You know, oh, is it risky to do a venture? Absolutely, no question. But there's actually a bigger risk if you did not try. right and i think that has been my biggest learning which is if you truly believe in it you better have that conviction you better have the stamina and the endurance and these are all attributes that i think go bound to do you really believe in it or not mm-hmm. so say yes i believe in it and at that particular point in time the the level of risk is much much lower for you to try mm-hmm. than you to not try okay can you um the distinct uh, distinguish between the risk for, uh, as an entrepreneur and the risk as an employee or not doing a, a startup so i think it's the same i mean we firstly we you know we don't think of employees as employees and and you know founders okay. it's it's one t 
ultimately you are going to do this you're going to succeed together or you're going to fail together mm -hmm. that's the only way uh, in terms of, of the mind so quantity of risk doesn't really matter it's like are you going to succeed as a team or are you going to fail as a team mm -hmm. and so I, we don't make a distinction hopefully you know hormone can corroborate that and others can too so i don't feel that we have this issue of like oh you have more risk and i have less okay. risk I think if people felt that way, they were probably in the wrong company. Okay. Mm -hmm. And are there any other learnings? Maybe I don't. Know, in terms of customer development, I mean, I think it's quite hard to convince, for example, the bigger players and partners, or maybe how uh, launching a mobile app and growing the user base. And yes, I think the, again the learning comes down to something that maybe I'll repeat what I said in, for a different question, which is. It's don't get too hung up on, oh, I built the app and now I, I succeeded. In fact, your hard part starts at that particular point in time. Mm -hmm. Getting it distributed, getting it to be used, getting it, you know, partnering with other companies. That's where a lot of the challenges lie. So you're going to need more stamina, more runway to get you to accomplish to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and of course, success, you know, don't, mm -hmm. don't gauge success too early because... Some, so many changes are happening in the ecosystem that you've got to constantly stay ahead. Mm -hmm. And the second piece of advice I think personally that I've learned is, and I don't know if it's applicable or not, it's a very, very interesting and delicate balance between how much are you investing for today mm -hmm. and how much are you investing for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That balance is, is a very dynamic thing. Yeah. It's not like, oh, it's 50-50, it's 30-70, you cannot assign that. Mm -hmm. If you overly put all your investment, everything about the future, everything strategic, I think you can get screwed. Mm -hmm. If you say everything is about today, very, very tactical, I think you may wake up one day and say, wait a second, where did I land? Yeah. No. So maintaining that balance of what is strategic and what is tactical, it's a constantly changing exercise. There is no magic formula and you just have to do it on your own. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Sujanya. And I'm pretty sure we should take a photo right now and then share it by okay. Beamit. Cool, but more importantly, use Beamit to share it. Right. Thank you. Awesome, thank you very much. Thanks. Great. Nice, Sujanya.